God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the senior pastor of the church. Today, we will be presenting part two of a message series, How Long? Our scripture will be from Revelation chapter 14 and verse 11, which reads as follows from the King James Version, And the smoke of the torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now the God's word version renders it, the smoke of the fire that torments them goes up forever and ever. There is no relief day or night for those who worship the beast and his image, for anyone who has the mark of its name. My beloved, there's going to be bad times come upon the face of the earth during the tribulation period. I just pray that you're not here for that. I pray that you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and you are called up in what we call the rapture. Because if not, you will go through the tribulation period. My beloved, it is no laughing matter or a matter to shun away from. Because if it is written... In the Bible, it is going to happen. So my beloved, what I would like you to do is keep up with us in this ministry. Follow our videos, because our videos speak truth. Please like us, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications so that you can stay tuned with us as we preach God's Word and we preach about sin and judgment. Thank you, my beloved. So today, as I said, we will pick up with Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. Now, the book of Revelation, a lot of people don't want to read it because it seems to frighten them. But know that it is not just frightening, but it is a warning to all those that read it as to what is going to happen in the last days. The book of Revelation is powerful. It is enlightening, and it is full of prophecies. But know this. My beloved, God is warning us as to what is going to happen so that you may turn from your sinfulness and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and be spared of all the punishment that is going to come on the face of the earth and of the punishment that the lost, that the sinners, that the non-repentant will face after they leave this life. My beloved, this verse is serious, so please pay attention to it. It says, and the smoke of the torment ascendeth up forever and ever. I go up, the smoke thereof shall go up forever. The fire of hell, or the fire of the lake of fire, will never go out. This statement of the eternity of punishment is also in agreement with what is written in Luke chapter 16 and verse 26. And Mark chapter 9 and verse 44. They have... No rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now, talk about no rest, which means you are in agony all the time. Every second, fraction of a second, and that lasts for eternity. Now, there's no rest in contrast with the blessed rest of the saints of God. And you can read that in Mark chapter 9 and verse 13. There is a stronger expression than those who worship the beast. It means those whose distinguishing characteristic is that they are worshiping the beast and persist in worshiping him, even until the end. They will not stop worshiping the beast, although they know that their torment is drawing close. This characteristic is so strongly marked that they are here represented as keeping it, even after their death. It's like they're going to continue to worship Satan, but they will be in hell doing it. The beast represents the kingdoms that will bear rule over the world from Adam until the second coming of Christ. While in the spirit, the beast is seen as a personality, as in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. In the physical, he is represented at different ages throughout the period of human existence as different kingdoms of the earth. The Antichrist 
The word antichrist means either against Christ or instead of Christ, in place of Christ. The word only appears in Scripture four times. However, the Antichrist gets defined by other names. As you look at the prophetic calendar, the Bible speaks about a period on the earth known as the Tribulation. During this period, the Antichrist becomes the dominant figure or the ruler of the earth, and people will follow him. The false prophet is one that spills out lies. So during the second half of the Tribulation, Satan will give power to a false prophet to deceive the world into worshiping the Antichrist. We do not know when the rapture and subsequent tribulation will occur, but the false prophet may be alive even today. We don't know what part of the world he is in. We don't know anything, but we know the way the signs of the times are going, he could be alive today. Let's talk about the unholy trinity. Once the Antichrist and the false prophet emerge, on the world stage, Satan will establish an unholy trinity. See, we have a holy trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But there will be an unholy trinity. Just as the Holy Spirit leads people toward the relationship between God the Father and Jesus Christ, the Antichrist will receive his power and authority from Satan. This blasphemous trio will control every aspect of society and attempt to steal God's glory, which is impossible. You cannot steal God's glory. You can like, mimic it, but you will never have it. The mark of the beast is the mark put on the forehead of those who worship the beast, the Antichrist, and the symbol of opposition to God. The strain of apostasy regarded as both, which means indelible or cannot be removed, and unavoidable. Those who take the mark will be damned forever without a chance to repent. Once you take the mark of the beast, you cannot repent. You cannot say, oh, I didn't mean to do it. Because you would have taken the mark of the beast consciously. Therefore, your sin will never be forgiven in this life or the life to come. So thoughts to consider, my beloved. Stop wasting your time on non-meaningful things. Your eternal destiny depends on how you invest your time here on earth. Your time here on earth is so very short compared to eternity because eternity has no end. You do not know how much time you have to live here on the earth. Once your time here on earth is gone, it is gone forever. Give thought to these things, my beloved. Those who went to hell in Noah's day are still there suffering. They have no relief. Those who went to hell in Abraham's day are still there. Now we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities. Their immortal souls are still there, which means they will never die. Although they seek death, they will not find it. They suffer extreme torment and they will not perish. They can never pay their debt to God for their sinfulness because they would have had to have done it here on earth. There is not a gospel to be preached in hell. The gospel of Christ is not in hell. It is only here on earth. For Christ did not die for the damned. In other words, there is no means of God's grace for them, them, those that are in hell. There is no mercy in hell. And although their pain is extreme, it is excruciating, God will not have pity on them whatsoever. Though their wishes for deliverance are great and their cries are loud and continue. They have no hope of relief, no hope of forgiveness. Hell will not end for those that are damned, for those that reject Jesus Christ and are cast into the lake of fire. Let's have some closing words. Steps to avoid eternal damnation. Please listen, my beloved. Repent and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Obey the commandments of God. Don't yield to the passions of this world. Live a godly life of love and compassion for your fellow man. Love the Lord, your God, with all of your might. Minister, which is evangelize for Jesus Christ and testify of his love for all mankind. Pray and study the word of God as much as you can. Seek God for direction. 
He has a plan for you in this life. Pray for the lost souls in this life and even for your own household. These are just a few ways to avoid damnation. But the most important of these steps is to repent and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and be converted through his cleansing blood. Words of warning to the lost. The lost so far from the flood have been in hell for about 4,000 years with no relief. They continually think about their folly and stupidity for not repenting and wanting other opportunity to do so, but they will not get it. And many generations have passed and followed them into hell. No matter how long they are there, they will never receive God's mercy. Because if they don't receive it here on earth, they will not receive it in hell. The first sight of hell causes all who go there to tremble with fear. God has appointed a time to wait on you to repent, but the Spirit will not always strive to draw you to Jesus Christ. At this present time, you have more opportunities to see the light of Christ and be saved from this horrible place called the lake of fire. You have preachers and the Bible to teach you, to lead you, and guide you. If you go to hell, a tempest will steal you away as a thief in the night. So, you're wondering, well, okay, preacher, who's in hell right now? Who's in the lake of fire? Okay, let's put it right. Who is in hell? Who's in torment? And who will be in the lake of fire? All the evil people in this life, murderers of innocent people, thieves, pedophiles, rapists, adulterers, filthy-minded, unclean, haters of men, evil people in the judicial system and medical system, haters of God, godless leaders, and all those that are disobedient, etc. Those who lived in Noah's day, Abraham's day, and all others through generations until this present time are in torment. The most evil and most vile people ever known to mankind are in torment. Satan, demons, the Antichrist, false prophet, and the beast will all be there. But there is a way of escape, my beloved. That's why I preach every week. That's why I'm in the ministry. And I will be here until my last breath. Then I will be immediately in the presence of my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to be there with me. So won't you think on this, about repenting. Think about this message. Watch it over and over and over again. Or listen to the audio over and over and over again. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to be with me in heaven because hell is a real place. Don't go there. Repent today. The only way to escape hell is through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one enters into the kingdom or no one goes to the Father except through me. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life or eternal life. My beloved, there is a way of escape for you. Won't you take it today? Please, think about this message. But right now, I want to lead you in a prayer of repentance because tomorrow isn't promised to you or the next day. This afternoon isn't promised to you. The next hour isn't promised to you. The next minute isn't promised to you. So won't you please repent today? There is hope for you. If you are listening to this message, if you are breathing, I would like to lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Here's the criteria, my beloved. Plain and simple. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world and the only way to heaven. You must believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. He's got sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. Won't you believe that today? Won't you pray this prayer with me and be assured that you will go to heaven when you leave this life? It's not hard. Just put down your flesh. Don't listen to them thoughts that say, no, this preacher isn't right, or that's not right. Believe the word of God. Open your Bible if you don't believe what I'm saying and read it. Read the New Testament from the book of Matthew to the book of Revelation and ask God to show you all truth through his Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. But until then, won't you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, 
I heard the message today. I believe the message today. I believe that if I died today or tomorrow or next week or next month, I would go to hell. I don't want to take that chance today. I am sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind and the only way for me to get to heaven and avoid the lake of fire. I believe that he was born. He was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today with all my heart. I confess it today, and I truly repent of my sins. Help me, lead me, and guide me in my new walk with you, to serve you, to tell others about you. Give me that boldness. Allow me to go to my family and my friends and tell them about your goodness and your mercy and about Jesus Christ being my Savior and Lord. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. I beloved, if you said that prayer, truly repent it and meant it from your heart. Let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I want you to do immediately is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, one that teaches the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Go there, get an audience with a pastor or one of his elders. Tell them what happened. Ask them to anoint you with oil. Ask them to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And baptism is a testimony of an inward conversion. Ask them to give your Bible, if you have one, to mentor you, to teach you, to lead you, to guide you, to help you to grow. And then what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmelothian.com. But please, let me hear from you. My message title has been, How Long?, which deals with the coming judgment for all. From the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 11. God bless you, my beloved, and what a way to start off the new year, okay, as a new creature in Jesus Christ. We're still in the month of January, so please consider that, okay? And you can rejoice not only in the year 2023, but the rest of your life, the life that God gives you here in the earth until he takes you to heaven. Thank you once again, my beloved. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the senior pastor of Abundant Grace Church. God bless you, my beloved, and walk with God continually. Amen.